You can say that an object is undergoing uniform circular motion if it travels in a circle at a constant speed. Now, what is important to note is that though the speed is not changing, that is, if it covered a distance of say 30 centimeters on this arc in two seconds, then it would cover 30 centimeters in two seconds on any other arc on this circle. However, the particle's velocity is changing constantly. And why do we say that? Because you can see the direction of the velocity vector is changing as the object curves at every point on its circular path. And we know that if there is a change in velocity, there is acceleration. And that in a way sets conditions for circular motion. So whenever you see an object undergoing uniform circular motion, three things are for sure. One, the velocity vector is always a tangent to the circle at that point. Two, the acceleration vector is always perpendicular to the velocity vector and therefore always pointing towards the center. And three, the magnitude of the velocity vector and the acceleration vector remains constant. So let us go ahead and explore all the formulas you would require to solve numerical problems. And number one is the magnitude of the acceleration, also called the centripetal acceleration. And that is given as A is equal to V square upon R, where V is magnitude of velocity and R is the radius of the circle in which the object is moving. Now, if you want to find the time taken to do one revolution, you simply take the distance covered in one revolution and divide it by the time taken. And here, the distance covered in one revolution is 2 pi r or the length of the circumference and the speed is v. Therefore, the time taken is 2 pi r upon v. And this is what we call the time period of uniform circular motion or simply said the time taken to do one single revolution. Well, if it takes t seconds to do one revolution, Straightforward mathematics tells us that in one second, it will do one upon t revolutions. And that is what you call the frequency of revolution. So if an object, say, takes 0 0.25 seconds to do one revolution, that therefore is the time period, then in one second, it can do one upon 0 0.25 revolutions or four revolutions per second. In a more formal way, we say that the frequency of revolution is the number of revolutions made per unit time. And therefore, this equals V upon 2 pi r. Now, in perfect circular motion, the acceleration is always perpendicular to velocity component, which means there is no component of acceleration parallel to the velocity vector. And since there is nothing to accelerate the body in this direction, there is no change in speed and we get V as the constant speed. In fact, you could even say that circular motion is not possible without centripetal acceleration. So let us now see how this formula can be derived. And when you do this derivation, your understanding of circular motion will get even better and this will really help you to solve problems that may not be as straightforward. So look at this particle which is moving in uniform circular motion with a certain constant speed in a radius r. Now the particle moves from point P1 to P2 and let's say the time taken is delta t. So we can say the vector change in the velocity is V2 minus V1, which equals delta V, that should be this. Now the change in angle delta theta is the same here and here, because you see V1 is perpendicular to the line OP1 and V2 is perpendicular to line OP2. Hence, 
these two triangles are similar and therefore the ratios of corresponding sides should also be equal or we can write delta V upon V1 should equal delta S upon R or delta V should equal V1 into delta S upon R. So now that we know delta V we can say that average acceleration that is delta V upon delta T becomes V1 upon R times delta S upon delta T. Now if you want to find instantaneous acceleration A at point P1 we can use the techniques that we've learned in the earlier lessons that is we take the limit of this expression as we move point P2 closer to point P1 and we can therefore write instantaneous acceleration as A is equal to V1 upon R times delta S upon delta T as the limit of delta T tends to zero. And you can rewrite this expression by taking constants outside or A is equal to V1 upon R times delta S upon delta T as the limit of delta T tends to zero. Now we can also say that if delta T is short enough that it tends to zero delta S is the distance the particle moves along this curved path and therefore the limit of delta S upon delta T is nothing but the speed V1 at point P1. Now since P1 can be any point on this curved path we can just go ahead and drop the subscript and then V can be taken as speed at any point on this curve and what we get is a rad is equal to v square upon r where the subscript rad indicates the acceleration vector is radial in nature or pointing towards a center at all times and in Greek anything that seeks a center is termed centripetal and therefore we get the term centripetal acceleration. So if you really want to excel on the topic of motion in two dimensions and derivation and use of various equations, I would suggest you head over to this playlist and please do give a thumbs up if you like the video, that will be helpful and let's catch up in the next video.